Welcome to our Bible lesson today, boys and girls. Can you guess what our lesson is going to be about today? Oh, I'm so sorry. <coughs> oh, me. Yes. Pain, and suffering, disease. And everywhere we go today, we have to wear these uh, masks keep from spreading the coronavirus or from getting it where did the where did all this pain and suffering and disease come from has it always been like that well to answer that question we need to go to the book of genesis and find the answer remember god created a perfect world for adam and eve to live in and he planted this beautiful garden in Eden and put Adam and his wife there with the animals, the plants. He said, you can eat anything you want in this garden, the fruits, the vegetables, the seeds. Enjoy God's presence in the animals. They, they weren't um, hunting each other or... or killing one another. There was no death. There was no suffering, no pain, no hurricanes, no tornadoes, no bug bites. It was a perfect world. When God saw it, he said, this is very, very good. And he made all of this for Adam and Eve to enjoy. But he said, there's one tree in the garden that you can't eat of, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But one day Eve was walking in the garden and she got as close as she could to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now in this picture, it shows the fruit being a hand grenade. Now the fruit wasn't a hand grenade, but you'll understand why it's pictured as a hand grenade in a minute. But when she looked around the tree and she saw that, wow, the fruit surely looks good to eat, this serpent came slithering down and spoke to her and said, didn't God tell you you could eat from all the trees in the garden? She says, oh, yeah, we can eat of all the trees, but we're not, we're not to eat from this tree. We're not even to touch it. Well, God didn't really say that, but the serpent said, no, no, God didn't really mean what he said. She says, oh, no, God said if we eat from this tree, that we would surely die. And the serpent said, no, you will not surely die. God knows that when you eat from this tree, you're going to be wise like he is. He's trying to cheat you. He's trying to hold back from you and keep you from enjoying life to its fullest. He knows that um, this fruit will give you complete satisfaction and enjoyment that, you're, that, that you can have in life. Go ahead, take eat from it. Some people think that maybe even the serpent took a bite himself. And she saw, well, nothing happened to him. So she said, boy, it sure looks good to eat. Looks like it could make somebody wise. So she reached out and she took of the tree, and ate it and gave to her husband, Adam. And he ate. And when Adam ate, they both knew they had sinned against God and they were ashamed and they went and they hid in the bushes and covered themselves with leaves and tried to hide from God. And so though, although God had created a very good and perfect world, when Adam and Eve, when they ate from the forbidden tree, they brought sin and death into the world. Adam's rebellion against God's command brought the awful effects of pain and suffering 
and death, sickness and sorrow into the world. And so it was sin that corrupted God's perfect corrupt creation. It's not God who just made the world the way it is. He created a perfect world, boys and girls. And we show that same rebellion, and I show that same rebellion when I disobey God's word. You show that rebellion when you disobey your mom and dad, when you, when you uh, say things that aren't true. These are all called sin. And they separate us from God. And it's this sin and our sin that brought death and sickness and sorrow into the world. And so because of disobedience, because of this sin, Adam and Eve had to leave the garden. God drove them out of the garden and the earth was cursed. The ground now would produce thorns and it would be hard to make a living. The uh, animals were affected. All of creation was affected by this sin. And so we live, now live in a broken world that is full of pain and suffering and death and things like the coronavirus. And when that's, when we find a cure for that, there will be other things, boys and girls, but it's not permanent. When God drove them out of the garden, he made them a promise. He said, I'm going to send a redeemer, a savior who will destroy Satan and sin and remove this curse that was put upon mankind and the earth. And so one day he would send a savior and he did. John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we now live in a world that's full of pain and suffering and death because of sin, because of our rebellion against God. But one day, all of that is going to change. Jesus has promised to come. He's making and preparing a home for us. And one day, this curse is going to be removed. He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth because he sent his son Jesus to pay for our sins. And when we put our trust and faith in him, we can become his children and we can look forward to a day when we again live on a, a perfect uh, place where there's no pain, no death, no sorrow. And we can have that because of Jesus. I trust that you will... Um, Continue reading and trusting God's word and that you will put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus and in his promises.